Well, this one says drum stand, so I'm assuming I need to open this one first. everything I need. So assuming I've done everything correctly, it's looking like a pretty sweet and durable setup. Now it's time to add the pads and symbols. So I just unboxed the actual module. Um, so this is the TD-17 van. Looks really nice. Seems pretty simple though, so I think I won't have too much of an issue with adjusting to it. Just unbox the snare. I can already tell I'm gonna appreciate this nice large head here. With the other kit I had, every pad was the same. And here's the the tom pad for comparison. The tom pad, you know, the size is fine, whatever, but the snare, I'm gonna really appreciate this extra room. At first, I was a little bit confused about this design choice, but I realized that this is actually for my symbol to get proper sway without wearing out the bottom of it and that's really really cool so all the pattern symbols are on still have some comfort adjustability things to do but for the most part, the hardware alone just already has me enthralled. Now it's time to move on to the coup de gras. set up now let's figure out what it sounds like all right everyone so here i am sitting at the roland td17 kbx that once again was a present from my lovely lovely fiance and also big shout out to symbol fusion in houston texas uh skyler for the help in picking this out this was a very good pick very good recommendation i'm very impressed so far already i had a chance to mess around with it a little bit and it's so much more sensitive and it's so much more responsive and you know I'm very very impressed overall so I'm just gonna do a quick overview and give my initial reactions of it so like I said we have this extra large space for the snare head and I I appreciate that very much and it's very very sensitive it can you know record velocities from I think from like 3 all the way up to 127 and it catches like every single bit like
very, very sensitive as we can see. You can pick up even the faintest of grace notes there. Pretty much similar deal for all of the mesh heads. And actually, they came fairly loose and they actually told you to tighten them up. And you know, that helped you get even more response out of it. The symbols, the symbol pads are really nice. They each have a edge, um, bow, and then bell type of thing. You know, you can really get in there. The ride symbol has its own special jack for the bell. So I guess that's just to help with getting a more realistic feel. But I do still get the bell on my other two. Yeah, I do still get three different sounds and they have a whole bunch of different sounds here too. So in this brain, we can see that I, you know, I have like a, a number of sounds I can deal with. A lot of options here. Uh, of course, we have the click, which just turns on my, um, you know, I can get a metronome going or without. Uh, there's a really cool coach feature, which basically uh, helps you, you know, you can do a time check, which basically tests for how good you can do a groove. Sorry if that interface wasn't super clear. Um, so that's a really cool feature. So that's that'll be really good for helping me practice, like keeping my time. And then of course you have a couple of different songs you can go to. I think it's only seven different tracks here and they're each about no longer than 10 seconds. Uh, this last dance one here, you can see it's only two seconds. Um, but those are pretty cool. Those sound pretty nice and they loop very cleanly. Right. That's really nice. I may do an Instagram loop of that at some point. And so the different drum kits, there's a couple of different, there's a 50 different drum kits that you can have here. And then there is how many spaces for your own? Wow, there's 50 different spaces for your own. And um, you can see here, I have a user sample button. And this would actually be where I can load in. So you can see they have a couple of things here, but I'd be able to load in samples that come from elsewhere. Um, so if I have a particular sound that I like better that I come across, I'd be able to load it in via USB, I believe, and use it here on the drum set. So that's a really, really cool thing. And this thing can get really in your face. You can see we have our own uh, kind of knobs up here for different features, ambient space and treble. Um, you can even go in deep here, you get to the levels of each of your drums. Your kick can go, you know, you can lower your kick down 10 decibels or whatever, then come and do your, your snare and, and raise that, you know, three decibels or whatever. Let's see what the max is. The max is six. So it looks like the max is six and the minimum is minus 40. Nope, minus, oh goodness. Oh, you can just bring it all the way down. Okay, so yeah, you can do different muffling. Uh, so off, you know, you have that realistic ringing here, but then you can get tape one. Change it up a little bit. Let's go really drastic donut two here. Yeah, just take it all the way away. All right there, take five. I like kind of like the way this one sounds. That's kind of cool. Now I did actually build my own kit already. I took up user kit 51. So I'll just walk through what I have here. This is probably what I'm gonna be using the first couple of videos that I put out. Um, so I went with a mahogany snare drum and I can even adjust the strainer. I went with strainer that says tight three. So it gives me that sort of feeling. Uh, by the way, pretty much everything I have uh, for the sake of my mixing has been taken down, you know, 14 dB, 10, 12, 13. Kick drums about down by 10. So I pretty much cut everything to make sure I don't clip. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna have to do some experiment and make sure everything's well balanced. Uh, for the kick, I went with close mice kick one. I did not put on the sympathetic snare buzzing. Um, I don't particularly care for that sound, you know, as a, you know, as an effect. So I left that alone. The toms are all birch. Uh, went with a 12, 14, and 18. And I, I mean, you can see here, I skipped over I went T1, T3, and then T4. I don't particularly need that T3 sound. Um, and then my tuning on each one of those, nothing, nothing too major. Nothing too major. Muffle, take four, take one, take, oh yeah, take four on the last one because I like a, I like a kind of a dead, almost dead sounding uh, low tom, but my, my top twos, I like for them to ring a little bit. For my hi-hat, 
I like the sound of this 15 inch heavy. Um, so that's really cool. You can, you could even change the size up a little bit if you wanted to. The hi-hat doesn't have a muffle. Instead, what they let you do is toggle the different fixed positions. Either you can have a normal hi-hat, which is just, it opens and closes at will. You can do a fixed close. Or, or even in everything in between the fix open. Um, of course, I'll just do normal for now. The crash, uh, we have no muffling, but you can put tapes up to, you know, tape one and the most extreme is tape 19, which is basically a choke. Basically, a, just a choke crash there. I went with a 18 inch dark crash. And for my second crash, I elected to go with a splash symbol, uh, 12 inches there. Uh, did I stay 12? Well, I downsized it to, to a 10. And then my ride symbol, 20 inch dark ride, but I believe I, yeah, I upsized it by one, by one point to go to 21. And I mean, it makes such a big difference to me. Here's the, here's the 20. And then here's the 21. It just sounds so much darker, doesn't it? Um, and I put, I did put a little bit of tape on it, uh, just cause it's been, I don't, I don't know why, but when you have no tape, to me it sounds a little, a little overzealous, a little overzealous with no tape, so. I believe that's it as far as the settings I'm going with right now. Now it's very likely that I'm gonna be changing these as I go along. So the first couple of videos that I put out with this, don't be surprised if the sounds are a little bit different every time. But I mean, for the sake of what I'm doing, for the sake of learning the kit, um, I am gonna just do whatever I think sounds really good to me. And of course I'll be happy to take feedback and see if I can make some adjustments. I have so many customization options on this. Possibilities are almost literally endless for me because this like this is a big step up from what I was operating on before. But it, it's it's a really cool thing. So overall, I'm really in love with it and I can see myself, you know, being a Roland. This is my first Roland product ever. So I, I can definitely see myself being a Roland head here. But yeah, I mean, Roland TD-17 KVX, really great kit. I really love it. We're gonna do a lot of great music together here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this overview and unboxing. Um, if any of you were thinking about getting this, I hope I was able to help in some way. And those of you who are more experienced with these advanced type of e-kits, if you have any advice to offer me in way of making sure I get the best possible sound quality out of them, making sure I get the best possible EQ. Um, I'm happy to take any of those kinds of comments under the YouTube video or to my Twitter, Instagram, email, website, whatever. So, oh, I guess that's my cue. Well, all right. So I will catch everybody on the very next episode of Stick to Game. So till next time, everyone. <laughs>